Praise the Lord, everybody. Is this working right? Am I doing this right? God bless you. You may be seated. Boy, it feels good in here today. Does it always feel like this here? Man, y'all have a good church. All right. I'll be moving in and just sign up here. I'll come sit right next to you. Praise God. This is good. What an honor and a privilege it is to be here today in Souls Harbor here in Phoenix. Now, I was trying to do the math. I was trying to do the math. I was here, I think, 25 years ago. I think the last time I was here was 25 years ago. I'm trying to figure out the math. But it didn't look like this. And it wasn't quite like this. You all and God have done something. And so I want to salute you uh, for all of that. And it uh, uh, feels good to be in the house of the Lord today and to feel his beautiful presence. And, uh, and if you'll just be patient with me as I wiggle in this saddle, I'm trying to feel the saddle up here just a little bit. And uh, I'm used to the church I pastor, and uh, but it's different uh, being in another man's pulpit. And I do uh, count that a very high honor uh, that we don't feel worthy of. Uh, but uh, let me just make a few statements here before we try to get into the Word of God today. Uh, first, uh, I think it's always in order to give honor to God for how good God has been to all of us, how good God has been to all of us, and uh, I love him with all my heart. I wasn't raised in church. I wasn't raised in church. My brother and I came from a really messed up home, drugs and alcohol. My mother was a prostitute, and it was a bad life. It was a hard life, and through an aunt and an uncle that were in church, we came in Los Angeles and found what you all have here, found the beautiful presence of God, and fell in love with him. I got the Holy Ghost at a youth camp up in Big Bear, and my brother got the Holy Ghost, or my older brother got the Holy Ghost about three minutes after me, but I'm his elder in the spirit. I'm his elder in the spirit. Okay. He should have repented faster. I don't know what to say. This tells you who's smarter, but anyhow. Uh, and I love my brother, but, and, and then it's been a journey that was back in the mid eighties and it's been a journey since then, uh, trying to live for God, trying to, trying to follow God. I'm going to tell you, life's a trip. Yeah. And if you're a young person, you haven't found that out yet. You just hold on a little bit and you'll find out about that. And, uh, but there's no life like living for God. And so it's such a tremendous honor to be here today, here in Souls Harbor, and uh, give honor to the Lord. And then uh, I'd like to give honor to uh, Bishop Crow. Um, I, I love your pastor. He called me his friend, and that touches me very deeply. Friends are precious things. Real friends are precious things. And uh, I love your pastor, this uh, great man of God. I remember, I think it's been 10 years ago, 12, 15 years ago, I don't remember now, when he came and preached for us when I was just digging out a church brand. I'm just trying to start. I didn't even know what to do. I was trying to start a church and dig it out. I was written another church's church, and, and anyhow, and he so graciously came and took time out of his schedule uh, to preach for us and help us and be a blessing. And uh, I love him and appreciate him a lot. And then let me also say, uh, give honor to Sister Crow. Uh, and uh, she's funny. She's really funny. She's funny. And my daughter, Maddie. Hey, and I want to say how much I appreciate you guys praying for Maddie when you did that uh, ladies thing. My daughter was having that allergic reaction, and you all prayed for my daughter. My daughter's allergic to peanuts and all kinds of nuts. And so she was here chopping up nuts and Joel's thing and whatever, and she's just trying to be helpful. And so she had that reaction, and, and you all prayed, and God touched her and, and uh, without the EpiPen, and it worked out. And thank you for praying for my daughter. 
And uh, yeah, and so I asked Sister Crow last night, I said, do you have a, because they're putting this peanut butter in this thing. I said, do you have a peanut allergy? She said, oh, yes. And so I got scared all of a sudden because she had had, and then she said, I'm just kidding. I thought, all right, all right, that's cool. That's cool. So give honor to the bishop, give honor to Sister Crow. I also want to give honor to Sister Erica. Um, my respect for you, little sister, is pretty high. I see the burden that you carry with your folks. And uh, hats off. Hats off. It's not always easy to be a preacher's kid. So hats off to you, little sister. Praise God. And then I have to give honor to all of you. And uh, I love the saints of God. Um, I'm, I'm crazy about people who go to church. And uh, I heard a guy say something one time, and I think it's apropos, that, you know, we've heard it preached about heaven. And you know how they have like these uh, mansions and streets of gold and gates of pearl. You remember all this? And this sea of glass and all this stuff. And you get this big mansion, no rent, no utilities. Remember that? Heaven? And how we all can't wait to get to heaven. Remember? And, and how it's going to be so special. I heard an elder say this one time. He said, that may be what makes heaven, heaven for us. But the thing that makes heaven, heaven for him is you. You are the thing. You are the thing that he can't wait to be with forever. It's not the gold or the pearls. It's you, and so I want to give honor to this great church. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You are, you are absolutely incredible. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and tell them that. Say, you are absolutely incredible. Tell them you're wonderful. Tell them you're what's going to make heaven heaven for Jesus. All right. Praise God. Now, what time do y'all normally get out? Man, I'm getting older. I can't go long like I used to. I, Yeah, one of them boys in my church, he, well, he's not a boy anymore. It's weird how you get old. Everybody gets, you know, it's everything weird. It just changes. And he was a boy. He's not a boy anymore. But now I think he's 35 or whatever. Matter of fact, he needs to get married. If there's any of you young ladies, whatever, anyhow, I need he uh, he needs to get married. He needs, he needs to get married. But he told me, he said, Pastor, he said, man, he said, I he said, we were talking the other day. He said, how you used to walk the back of the pews and you'd stand on top of the pulpit, on top of the pulpit. And and he said, Man, he said, whoo. He said, those were some good days. I said, Brother Landon, those days are gone. I'm, I'm like, I can't take that risk anymore. You understand? I, I just get out of bed. I'm doing good nowadays. So, so I do see a clock back there, and it says about seven minutes to 11. And so, uh, uh, and I'm kind of tired. You know, I'm kind of tired right now. Uh, and so I'm not going to be too long. I'm just going to, can I just try to be myself a little? Now, see, I'm nervous. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. I'm so bad nervous because I, my friend and I need to preach a good message and I don't know if I can or not and I'm kind of sleepy and, and I'm nervous and I feel the Holy Ghost and I want to obey God, but I'm, I'm just like, oh man, man. So if you'll just let me try to be myself a little bit, you'll get back to some good preaching on Wednesday night and uh, somehow we'll get through this and you'll all just forgive me, all right? Praise God. But before we get into that, I do feel, I just felt a little something, uh, just a little, little trigger in my spirit, and I, and I wanted to share. Anybody ever heard the story of Genghis Khan and the Falcon? Yeah, Genghis Khan and the Falcon. Anybody? You got two folk? All right, well, I read this book, and, uh, oops, um, I read this book, and uh, uh, it's one of my favorite writers, uh, he's written a few good books. One of his books, he tells the story of Genghis Khan and the Falcon. And the story goes that Genghis Khan, you know, the old uh, mongrel warrior 
that along with all the normal instruments of war, he liked to hunt with the falcon on his arm. If you've ever read of falconry and how they do that, and the, the rider would ride out on the horse and the falcon would fly off into the air, and, and from that falcon's perspective, he can see the little fox or the rabbit. And, and, and then those, those falcons would pull their wings in tight, and, and I mean, they're hitting velocity, and then pow, and they'd hit the, the little rabbit or whatever it is, the little vixen, and then they'd come fly back to the falcon ear and bring the prize. And so that's a type of hunting, I guess they'd call it, with this, uh, this falcon. And so the story tells of Genghis Khan how one day he got with some of his men, and uh, he wanted, he had his prize falcon, his prize falcon. This one didn't miss. This one didn't miss. And so he went out one day, and they're riding, and uh, it was a long day. But, you know, some days things don't go like you want them to. Have you ever had a day like that where it just didn't? Yeah. And so he didn't get nothing. There was no rabbits. There was no fox. There, and and uh, uh, it was just a bad day. And the story says at the end of the day, he's all tired. His men are tired. He's exhausted, and, and, and he's thirsty, and he's looking for some water, and, he's man, he's just parched. And, and so all of a sudden he sees this stone face. And, and there's this little rivulet of water coming down. And so he reaches back into his saddlebag. He pulls out his cup, and, and he goes, and he starts to fill it with the water. Anybody heard this story? You remember this story? Yeah, yeah. And they hold that cup, and that fills that little cup up with the water. And then right as Genghis Khan was about to take a sip of that water, that falcon jumps, and he knocks the cup right out of his hand. And Genghis Khan, now this is a powerful warrior, and his men are watching him, okay? And this dumb bird just knocked that cup out of his hand, and he's looking at that, and he's saying, hmm, now that, that, you know, okay, this is my prize bird. Uh, I wouldn't normally let somebody get away with that. And, uh, and so he picks his cup back up, and, and he goes back, he does it again, and the bird does it again. It happens three times. Until finally, Genghis Khan is in a rage that his, his prize falcon, his bird, would dare reach out and knock his cup out of his hand. He pulls out his sword. Y'all heard this story? He pulls out his sword, and he kills that bird. In a rage, he thought, my men can't hear about this and go back and tell everybody else that Genghis Khan was bested by some little bird. Kills it. He takes his cup back up. He goes to get the water, and the rivulet of water has stopped. It was somehow dried up during this thing. So he climbs his way up the precipice. He gets over to find out where the water's coming from, and sure enough, there was a big pool at the top of the rock that was trickling the water down. But what he did not know and what he did not see is that there was a poisonous snake that had died and fallen in that water. And if he had drank the water, it's been a while since I've preached it, but I used to preach, don't kill your falcon. I'm going to tell you something. One of the greatest gifts one of the greatest gifts that God ever gave you outside of the Holy Ghost and the Bible is a pastor in your life. I can't explain that. I wish I knew how to explain that. But as a pastor, I'm taking it out of my time, I promise. I'll take it out of my time. I'll get you to wherever, whatever restaurant you're going to. As a pastor now, I've assisted men, churches. I evangelized all over the United States, preach, con pastor churches, started church, church. I'm going to tell you something. One of the biggest differences between the people that I pastor who make it and who don't make it are the ones who listen. And it's not because Pastor LaCour is so wise or so smart. People say that. I'm going to tell you something. No, it's just that God stuck me in a spot where I'm, I'm looking from an angle that they don't see from. 
And they just think that, well, well I, I need to be able to go and do this, or I need to go take this, or I need to go here, and I need to go that. And God has stuck me up on this wall. The Bible calls him a watchman on the wall. He sticks you up on this wall where it's so cold sometimes, and it's windy sometimes, and it's hot up here sometimes, and God knows how lonely it can be to be a pastor sometimes. And you're up here, but you're constantly looking to try to keep God's people safe. You take it for whatever it's worth. All I can tell you is as a pastor, how many times have I sat in my chair on this side of the desk and I'm thinking, God, I wish they would listen. They don't know the hell that they're about to go through because they can't see what's in the water. Be careful where you get your water. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let your pastor help you. He's not trying to be a lord over nothing. (laughs) I was an air conditioning contractor for 25 years. Made a lot of money. (laughs) Oh, Now I pastor, serve people, live in the smallest house I've ever lived in. Why am I doing this? Used to make $605,000 a year. It's not bad money. It wasn't for me, at least. Maybe y'all do a lot better over here in Phoenix. What am I doing? I'm trying to get myself to heaven, because this is what God told me to do. And I'm trying to get people to heaven. But the only way it works is if they listen. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Praise God. Let's love God together. Let's stand and magnify the Lord together for just a moment. Oh, my God. Lord, I pray, speak to us today, God. God, if it be possible, if it be possible. Oh, God, I want to be saved. Help me follow the man of God in my life. God, give me an appreciation for the eyes of the falcon. God, give me, don't let me slay my falcon, God, but give me a fresh appreciation for the man of God and the woman of God that you put in my life, Lord. Hey, I'm going to tell you, don't let anybody get between you and your falcon. There's some weird spirits out there that would like to separate you. Hey, 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 I got something else. I'm taking this, I'm taking all of it out of my time, I promise If somebody comes by and starts doing some of this, trying to get you to question the man of God or the woman of God in your life, I'm going to tell you what, you need to deal with that spirit. There ought to be something that rises up in you because they want you to drink poisonous water. They want to take your place. There ought to be something that says, don't mess with my falcon. Don't mess with my pastor. Don't mess with my pastor's wife. Get your hands off of their daughter. Whoa, my God, I'm starting to feel like an evangelist again. I'm starting to feel like, my God, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't mess, don't mess with stuff that ain't your business to mess with. They don't need your opinion. Take your opinion someplace else. Praise God. Sorry. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. Now I need to try to preach a nice sermon because my friend's listening. Okay. I don't put up with trash in my church. I'm going to tell you, if somebody's got a rebellious spirit, I have the police drag them out. I don't put up with trash. Don't, Don't mess. Don't mess with God and don't mess with God's beautiful people. I had some nasty, I don't put up with perverts. I don't put up with perverts. You know, churches attract perverts. Whoa, 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 whoa. Boy, I'm telling you what, I'm the spirit of evangelist is jumping all over me again. Weird spirits that come in predatory, looking for something innocent. I'm going to tell you what, church, you ought to rise up behind your falcon and say, not in this house, not in this house. Zechariah chapter number one and chapter number nine. Turn your neighbor and smile. 
Say, don't mess with my falcon. Don't mess with my falcon or his family. Or his family. Hallelujah, anyhow. Praise God. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm so excited right now. I'm trying to hold this pony back. I'm trying to hold this pony back. Praise God. All right. How many more minutes I got left? Then I got, man, about 10 more minutes. 10 minutes. What time is Luby's close? We got to get yonder, huh, folks? <laughs> we got to get yonder. Hallelujah. Don't ever tolerate rebellion. Rebellion, it's witchcraft. If some, my God, if somebody has a spirit against the authority in this church, that's a witch or a warlock trying to put a spell on you. You, the Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. There ought to be something that says, don't mess with my falcon. He's keeping my family safe. Man, I could preach on don't kill your falcon today, but I'm not. Zechariah chapter number 1 and Zechariah chapter number 9. Zechariah chapter now, those of you that are new, it's just south of Matthew, okay? So if you find Matthew, go back yonder about two, two books, and you should find it there. It's a little one there. Verse 3 says this, chapter 1. Therefore say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts. Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord. And he said, And I will turn unto you. Did you know you have power to actually move God? Did you know you have power to actually move God, G-O-D? Now, let me show you something else. Zechariah chapter number 9. Zechariah chapter number 9. Verse number 12. It's that word again. Turn. Everybody say turn. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. Turn ye unto the Lord, and he'll turn to you. Turn ye to the stronghold, and I'll give you double. If the Lord would just give me a, just a little tiny bit of help here today, I just want to talk. I don't even know that I'm going to preach. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the turning point. I want to talk to you about the turning point. If you don't mind, just lay your Bibles down one more time. Let's just slip our hands up in the air. Let's ask God's blessing on the remainder of this service here today. God, we love you. Thank you so much for your powerful presence that we felt, God, in our worship service. God, the unity, the beautiful thing that you're doing in this church, God, your glory that's resting on your people. We're so thankful, God, for everything that you've done, everything that you're doing. We pray, God, that you'd bless these last few moments, God, of this service here today. Day, we'll give you all the glory and praise. Let's clap our hands to the Lord together. Praise God. Thank you again, Pastor Crow, Sister Crow. God bless you, folks. You may be seated here today. Bible tells us a story in Matthew chapter number 17, where it said that after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up unto a high mountain apart. And it said that while they were up there on this mountain, it said that Jesus was transfigured before them. All of a sudden, Jesus metamorphosized. He changed into something right before their eyes. To the point where the Bible said that his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment were white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them, the Bible said not just Jesus changed, but, but next to Jesus there was Moses, and there was Elias talking with him. Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, is it good for us to be here? I'm going to tell you, sometimes the glory of God can get strong. He said, if thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, 
One for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. And while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed there. And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. You drop down to verse number 9. It tells us that when they came down from the mountain, that Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. His disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come. And the Bible said that Elias would restore all things. It was a new concept that Jesus was bringing to them that this new mission and this mandate from heaven, the whole reason why I came was to seek and to save that which was lost. I'm going to tell you the whole reason why Jesus came was for us. The whole reason why the Lord came was to help us. He said, Elias is going to come, or Elijah, and he's going to start a restoration business. I was talking to Brother Crow. He's telling me about this car he's got, he's working on. That's, he's got this car. And, 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 and my friend, I, I went over to his house the other day, and, and he's got this car, and they're working. And I'm not good at fixing stuff. I'm just, I fixed air conditioners for a long time, but I can't fix them. Matter of fact, I was in my little car yesterday in the transmission, the little sports car in the little transmission, and I thought, I got to get somebody. But there are some people, they're just good at fixing things. You ever met somebody like that? It's good to have a friend that can fix things. Take care of that friend because you're going to need him. Yeah. I was sitting in my recliner yesterday. Yeah, yes. Is that yesterday? Yeah, yes, I was sitting in my recliner. I call. We have church on Saturday and Sunday. Instead of having two on Sunday, we do one on Saturday, one on Sunday. And uh, and I called at the last Saturday of every month. I give them family day. Everybody take it off. So I'm just sitting at home in my recliner, and I'm just relaxing. I got the music playing. My windows and doors are open. It was 68 degrees when I left my house yesterday. 68 degrees. I had almost turned the furnace on. And uh, and uh, it's raining. I got the music. I'm relaxing. And then that phone goes off. And, it, and it's an old friend of mine. And he said, he said, Brother LaCour, he said, my air conditioner's down. And, uh, and can you help me? I don't even have my air conditioning tools anymore. But man, that's, that's a friend. <laughs> you know what? What are you going to do when a friend calls you? I'm going to tell you what you do when a friend calls you. You get up and you get rid of your sweats and you put your nice clothes on and you get what tools you have and you go crawl up on their roof. And before we know it, their air conditioner was fixed. I'm going to tell you, thank God for people that can fix stuff. He said he's going to restore all things. In other words, there's going to be some things that are broke. There's going to be some things that are damaged. But God has got this giant plan. And the reason why I'm glowing and the reason why there's these folks around me is because God's got a plan called the restoration business. Now, there's a scripture I like. I like, man. I like this verse. This for when I'm down. Hey, you know how there's the verses that always give you hope when you're down? Most of them are in Psalms. You know, you just go like this. And like, but there's another one in a little bit. Joel said it like this. He said, I will restore. The Spirit of God is on this little prophet. He said, I, this is Joel too. He said, I will restore. Everybody say restore. I will restore unto you the year that the locust hath eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm and my great army which I sent among you and ye shall eat in plenty and you're going to be satisfied and the praise of the name of the Lord your God that he had dealt bountifully with you and my people shall see the glory and not be ashamed. I'm going to tell you, God knows how to give it back. God knows how to restore.
I was at the car wash yesterday. They finally got a full service car. I'm going to tell you what Prescott ain't got. I'm going to tell you what, y'all are blessed. You don't even know the restaurants you have, the shopping. They don't have none of that. None of that in Prescott, okay? I'm there because God sent me, all right? But we didn't even have a full service car wash. You know where they wipe your car down? They didn't have it. They just got one. And so I'm finally, and you got to go through the machine halfway, and then, then I'm sitting there in these chairs, and the guy said, there's free coffee, and, and I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, in 1999, 1999, uh, Dodge, not the Ram, what's the littler one, the next one? Dakota, a, a 1999 Dakota was coming through. They got this thing on a conveyor belt. You drive on a conveyor belt, the conveyor belt pulls your car through while these guys, I thought, man, this is good for Prescott. We're, we're getting somewhere. And, uh, and they're wiping this thing. And, and I'm looking at this car and, and, and this little pickup, and I'm thinking, now something's wrong with this truck. Something's wrong with this. I'm looking at this truck, and I'm thinking, now what's wrong with this truck? Because it looked, I mean, brand new. I've got a 21 power wagon out there. My church bought me a, a power wagon for my birthday. $80,000 pickup. That's a nice gift for a church, huh? Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, I, my church is so cool to me. And, and, uh, and, and, and I saw this truck that looks as nice, actually nicer than my power wagon. It's a 1990, and I thought, my God. I see this old man, he's up there, he's at the thing, he's trying to pay, and, and I walk over to him. I said, sir, is that your truck? He said, yes, yeah, sonny. I said, man, that's beautiful. He said, she sure is. I said, you want to sell it? He said, no. Somebody restored something. I ain't never seen a 99 look like that. Some of you weren't even born yet. My God, I thought, Lord Jesus, look how beautiful. I'm going to tell you something. It's not like just some hack shop on the backside of town that's trying to piece it together with a bunch of bondo and tape. But when God puts your life together, when you let God, when you let God put your life together, I'm going to tell you it's joy unspeakable and foul. You can't beat living for God. Jesus can do what Jim Beam can't do. Jesus can do what old Mickey can't do. I'm sorry, some of us weren't raised in church. Jesus can do what Captain Kirk can't do. You don't even know who that is. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Everything out there that we chased Everything out there that the devil said, if you could just have this, then you're going to be happy. And we paid for it and did it. You know what the end result was? Bam! Another dent. Try this. Bam! Another dent. Try this. Bam! Another bad relationship. Try this. Bam! My self-esteem is gone. Try this. Bam! I can't even think quite straight. My God, I'm going to tell you the devil is a destroyer, but the Lord Jesus is a restorer. He's a restorer. My God, I'm going to tell you what's crazy about Jesus is that when Jesus does that, it's actually better than OEM. It's better than OEM. Yeah. You go you go to uh, Cragen or whatever that, what's that auto parts place called here? You go there and you say, man, I need a water pump. He said, well, do you want the OEM or do you want this? That OEM is like twice the price. You get the Chinese one and, you know, it lasts like six weeks. And it breaks again and it's always just a few days out of warranty. That's what religion does. I'm going to tell you something. I don't need more religion. I don't need more religion. I need Jesus Christ in my life. My God. 
But when Jesus does it, it's it's like better than new. It's better than new. Now, this is what our text said. He starts off and he says, first of all, you have the power to literally move God. How do you get God? How many would like to really get God's attention? I mean, does anybody have a need in your life here other than myself? Anybody ever been jacked up by the world? You got wrecked by life? You need a little help. That's why we're here today, right? Is that why we're here? Are you here for the backpack? Praise God. Whatever your reason, you're here. All right. Jesus or backpacks? Glad you're here. Wrecked. Boom. In our pride, we try to pretend like it didn't happen. Our pride. Then the church gave me that brand new power wagon, $80,000 truck for my birthday. Hey, they just bought me a motorcycle for Father's Day. My church, they're so good to me. They, I'm telling you, they're good to me. And uh, you say, well, he must pastor a big church. It's about half this size. My church has a revelation of giving. And that's why, I'm telling you, I wish I had time to tell you, my people have got money coming out of their ears when they learn how to give. When they got, a, no, no, you, you, you know, I'm going to tell you. I've got, I, don't know, I wish I had time to tell you. I wish I had time to tell you. They got money coming out of their nose since they learned how to give. I taught them. I said, you know, you got to, you got to, you cannot give. The Bible said with the same measure. That's why tight wads are always broke. Tight wads are always broke. God can't stick nothing in your hand because you're too stupid stingy. I got to go get to Luby's and I got to get home. It's, I'm going to tell you, I had an old elder. My God, can I go off on just chase one baby rabbit? One baby rabbit, okay? I'd like to, how many would like to have, be financially blessed? Yeah. Lift your hand. Don't lie. I mean, if, I mean, if you're loaded, don't lift your hand. You don't need it, okay? You want to be financially blessed? You need to learn how to give. The secret to you getting God to go, is you going like this. It affects him. When you overcome your stingy self, well, praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, they bought me a motorcycle for Father's Day. Yeah, matter of fact, my son, he's 16. Y'all haven't met Gabriel yet. Y'all met him. He needs to get married, too. <clears throat> and Gable, he's got a big old motorcycle. He's got a big old Honda. And he's way taller than me. Gable's. Gable, you'd think he's like a crow or something. <laughs> and, and Gable, when it's nighttime, and my son, he hugs me goodnight every night. And, uh, and, and he, he, calls, he still calls me daddy. He's almost 17. He calls me daddy still. And, and every night, every night, when it's bedtime, he'll come. And he's like this. He says, Good night, daddy. Good night, Daddy. And I hug him around his waist. I say, good night, son. Good night, son. That big old boy. I got that big old brand new Honda motorcycle. Uh, what is that thing? A CRF 300 Rally. Okay, brand new motorcycle. And, uh, and, and, and so he said, Daddy, let's go riding. I said, all right, let's go riding, son. Man, I don't know if I should be right. I, you know, when you get older, you just need to be more careful about stuff. And anyhow, we got to ride. We went over to that alto pit. I'm trying to hurry, folks. I, we got to that alto pit, and we got around that one car, and here's this rock face, and, 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 and he's behind me, and so I feel all this pressure. I, I can feel all this pressure. I don't like feeling pressure. I don't like people pushing on. And, and, so I, and so I get that. And right in front of my son and God, Now, I'll tell you, I did try to save the bike. I used my leg, try to protect her. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, and, and, and you get, I'm going to tell you something. You don't have to live long to get banged up in life. You don't have to get banged up. But God is a restorer. But there's, there's one little key, and I'm, I'm, I'm coming to a close with this. I'm kind of coming to a close. I'm going to pretend like I'm coming to a close. 
I'm going to pretend, okay? The power to get God's attention on you is for you to get your attention on Him. It says that He will turn to you if you turn to him. It's this crazy phenomenon. It's like magnets or gravity that when you take your attention, if if you're able to do this and put your attention on God, all of a sudden God begins to put his attention on you. I'm going to tell you, I want God in my life. I want God working in my life. I want to be blessed. I don't want to be depressed. I want to be happy. Moses, I want to make a leader out of you, but you got to turn and look at the bush. My God, I don't have time. I got to chop all this out. Moses couldn't be used until he turned aside to see. I don't have time for all this. Job, my God, I'm almost done. Job had it in a bad way. And, and this story, I'm glad this story is in the Bible. They say it's the oldest book in the Bible. I don't know if it is or isn't. But they say about Job, he was a righteous man. He's, he's burning in. He, he's making sacrifice for his kids. He's doing everything he knows to do to the point where God's bragging. God's bragging on him. It wasn't the devil that started that. You know who started that? God said, have you considered my servant Job? He's the one that said, Job, have you looked? Hey, devil, devil, come here. Have you, what's your name, son? Matthew. Hey, devil, have you considered my servant Matthew? Come, come on. I don't want God bragging on me. I don't want God bragging on me. I don't need that. Careful, you live to your right. See what happens? No. And man, his world, his world is like a multi-car pileup. And then, oh man, then his, (laughs) oh man, then his friends came. God knows that we're all trying. Is any of us perfect? We've all failed. And we've all come short of the glory of God. We all know our failure. We may try, but God knows we know. We know. I don't need somebody else to condemn me more. I know. I don't need somebody else to beat me up. I know. And his friends come. And man, it's just insult to injury. Salt in the wound. And man, he's hurting. And then... His attitude got funky. He starts off, you know, we normally do Job good and say, you know, he starts off, you know, naked, came by naked, I returned. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That was only in the beginning. You start reading what he says after that. Whoa. He said, you have been unjust. You haven't judged me right, God. Whoa. But haven't we all? Where things don't line up in our mind. And he's all mixed up. I'm almost done. He's, I'm, I'm, Bob, I'm speaking in faith. I'm speaking in faith. The end of the story is that God gave Job twice as much. As he had before. Read it in your Bible. He gave him twice as much. Well, how did that happen? The secret's in our text.
It said, when you turn, when you turn to me, you prisoners of hope, you've been sitting there so long, just hoping things would turn around. You've been sitting there for years now, tormented in your mind. When's it going to turn? When's it going to turn? When's my life going to change? When things are going to be happy again? When He said, I'm going to tell you the secret. When you turn, I will render double unto you. I'm here to preach to you today about the turning point. When you make it up in your mind, I'm going to live for God. No matter hell or high water, I'm going to serve God. Hell or high water. Stand with me, please. I'm out of time. There's been crazy days for this preacher. I don't know how y'all close, if musicians, whatever, however, however y'all do your thing here. I've been through ups and downs. I remember back in the 90s, stock market was roaring in the 90s. I remember that? Even a t- Man, we were making money hand over fist, trading options and stocks and moving money making thousands. Anybody remember all that? And then all of a sudden, it really, it tanked. I lost everything I had in two days. And I had worked hard with my business to save a lot of money. I lost everything in two days. I remember pushing my chair back from my desk and going down to the church on a Thursday night. And I remember, made sure nobody was there. I looked under all the pews. You know, sometimes you need to say stuff that you don't need everybody to hear. You know what I'm saying? Turn the lights on, looked under the pews, turn the lights back off. <laughs> and I fell down on my hands and knees. I started crawling, crawling. I said, God, where are you? I, I thought you were with me. I thought I was your servant. Here I am preaching and I'm trying. And God, God. My world had went. Talk about sickness. I'm going to tell you what. You can get one phone call from your doctor's office and it can change your life. Right. You can get some papers in the mail. Somebody can say something to you and confess something with tears running down their face and completely destroy your life. And you're wondering, how did I get here? How did I get here? I'm going to tell you what it is, folks. It's a backdrop for God to be able to reveal something new. He wants to show us that he is in the restoration. He knows how to fix damage. I'm so hurt, Brother LaCour. I'm so hurt. He knows. I may not be able to understand what you're going through, but there is one. I'm not going to get into all of it. But my world exploded a few years ago. My kids and I are doing the best we can. I'm sitting at my desk. And I hadn't talked to the bishop in a long time. He preached for me, but he just get busy in life. And whatever, whatever. And I'm sitting at my desk and... And where do you go from here? Where do you go from here? Where do you go from here? And God said, call Brother Crow. I said, who? <laughs> Your old buddy, call. I said, he don't even remember who I am. I was just a nobody that he came and helped. I called him up. He said, he said some words to me. Brother LaCour, 
I'm so sorry that you're going through this. He said, but brother, look, we're, God wants to help you and your best days are ahead of you, but you're going to have to let it all go. I'm going to tell you when God turned the captivity of Job, it's when Job prayed for those people that were hurting him. I don't want to pray for them. I hate them. I'm going to tell you, as long as I hold on to that, I'm missing chapter two. But when I can get myself to the place where I turn back to God, turn back to God and learn to let things go, that's when it all, I'm telling you, that's when it starts.